In this PHP programming lesson, you can learn to script a custom random string generator. It will allow you to specify the exact characters that your resulting random string will have after it's produced. And you can pass the length that the string needs to be through your function as an argument. We will be adding this function to our social website in order to generate random strings when we name files that our users upload. And we will be using it to generate our salts for our password hashes. Okay, create yourself a new PHP file. And I have also some people ask me why I use Dreamweaver. My response to you would be, why not? Why not use Dreamweaver? What, you think I use it as a crutch? No, I don't. Furthermore, you can't code your way out of a paper bag. And beyond that, I can kick your ass. Physically, I can beat you up. I just like the way it highlights my syntax and the way it lets me customize things. But I never tell people what code editor to use. I, I recommend that people use whatever code editor makes them happy in their heart. It's just text. It's just text, people. Calm down. And in your PHP includes folder, right there with your database connection file, you can save this file as rand string gen. Save. Now let's start our PHP scripting block. First thing we'll do is we'll make it start without being modular and we'll just make it a little script that we can echo out and see how it runs and then we'll make it modular okay so what you want to do is create a variable called chars and that's short for characters and in between your double quotes a b c d e f g h i j k l m n o p q r s t u v w x y z and then you can put 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and if you want special characters within your string, you can just place them right here. If you want the dollar sign, the underscore, question mark, exclamation, the dash, whatever you want to have in there. And if you want to allow certain characters, you might need to escape them. For instance, if I put in a double quote here, if I want to allow double quote to be in my random string, if I put that there, you see what it does is it breaks my syntax. So right before that double quote, I can just put a backslash. So backslash double quote and it will escape that character in the syntax and let me use it in the string so if you come across any characters that bust your string or bust your syntax you can escape them now the next line we're going to create a variable call it char array and that's going to be equal to the string split function open close parenthesis semicolon and the variable that you want to pass as an argument is that string of characters now string split what that does is it's going to take this string of characters and it's going to split them individually. So what will happen is you'll get a resulting array. So the first item in the array will be the A. The next item in the array will be the B. And so on and so forth. And the next thing we'll do is set up a for loop. And what the for loop is going to do is allow you to loop over this array of characters as many times as you like to randomly pluck as many as you want out giving you a resulting string that is a random bunch of characters. So a generic for loop like this gets three parameters and it works the same way in JavaScript. So if you're used to JavaScript, this will look very familiar to you. Create variable i, and make it equal to zero, semicolon. That's the first parameter. So while the loop is running, the second parameter is we assess whether i is still less than whatever ceiling number we want to give it. So let's say 10, so we can get a random string of 10 characters. Then you put semicolon and the next argument is simply iterate or increment the i variable. So i++ plus plus increments the i variable every time that this loop runs. And every time the loop runs, i is evaluated to see if it is still less than 10. So when it starts off, it's definitely less than 10 because it's zero. Every time the loop runs, i increments right here. So it becomes greater and greater until the loop hits its ceiling which we gave it a ceiling of 10. Now, within that for loop, the first thing we want to do is create a variable called rand item, and that just stands for random item that we're going to pluck out of this array of characters. We do the random plucking by using the array rand function, and you just simply put the array that you want to pluck out of as the argument in that function, and that will pluck at random any of these characters that you have in there. And then you can simply echo any kind of string you like so let's just put this bar here to separate each one as they come pouring out in the loop. Then I'll put a dot and I'll want to grab my char array variable and the index that we want to have is the rand item. 
because what rand item is going to be is a number that represents the index for one of these characters. So rand item is actually an integer, and that integer gets placed right here. That is what pulls the value out of the array. So now I'll run that and see what you get. Okay, so you can see what I get, and you would get a different randomized kind of string. Okay, now let's go, and we don't need that bar to render there, so let's remove that bar. And up top, let's create another variable called result. And that's going to be equal to nothing at first. Then down inside where we're echoing, let's put that result, dot equals. And we use dot equals to make sure that we're appending to that result variable. Then underneath, we can just echo full result. So what I should get is a 10 character randomized string. Let's run this now. Okay, so I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now what if I wanted... Instead of 10, 1,000. Press Control S, and now run that on your PHP-enabled server. So you see what I get? And you can have any characters that you want in there. Now we're going to set this thing up for modular usage. That way we can use it over and over again. And anytime we need a random string of characters of any length that we specify, we can easily just include this PHP file into our script and call the function. So at the very top, let's type in function, name it RANSTRINGGEN, and then open close parentheses, open curly brace, go down a couple of lines, put in the closing curly brace. Now what we're going to do is pass one argument through this function, which is the length, because this you want to be dynamic. So you can actually change that to a variable called len, short for length. And when it's passed through, it's going to be picked up here as len. So let's take all of this code right here that we have initially, and control x and place it inside of that function. Control V and make sure you indent your code correctly inside the function while you're writing your code anyway. That way you don't lose track of where things are. Okay, now instead of echoing, you're just going to return the result to the calling line in your script that calls this function. So now for usage, when you include this file into other files, for usage purposes, what you would do is say you had some other file and you would use it like this make a new variable, name it whatever you want, and make it equal to this function. We're going to run it right here, open close parentheses, semicolon. And then you just pass your length through however many characters you want. So let's get 50. And then we can simply echo that value to ourselves by making that variable output right there. Okay, now run that. Let me refresh my test page. So I have a 50 character random string and any time in your application, all you have to do to use it and to get a random string variable made like this, you can just run this one line right there. So there's your modular setup, and there is your usage instructions. All right, so you, now you have a file, and you can remove the usage instructions. Now you have a file called randstringgen.php. It lives in your PHP includes folder. And within any of your pages on your website, you can simply include this file whenever you want to use that function. Okay? And we're going to be using it actually in the next video for the Web Intersect series where we're going to create randomized solves or a hash. And I'm going to remove these characters because I don't want them in there. I just want numbers and letters. And you can actually put uppercase if you want all of the uppercase letters. Okay, so I'll see you guys in the next video where we're going to assemble the sign up page, some parsing scripts, and the activation script the activation through email script. So we'll be getting rolling real soon here now.